Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time since we've done a, you know, um, a Celtic Mind podcast. Um, you know, how did this happen? Like, how has this become, um, you know, what we're talking about now? Eddie, uh, obviously, I broke the news on Friday. Um, it broke on Friday that um, obviously there was rumours probably going about <laughs> 3 o'clock round um, obviously Eddie Howe, apparently it's been, you know, we went to a standstill um, so he doesn't want it anymore obviously um, and then in Broken Sky Sports News, the talks have broken down, he does not want the job but as soon as you, you were starting talks right there, as soon as you, the first question would be back to the staff, do they want to come away? Do you know what I mean? But, it's taken three months um, it's taken three months far too long to just say that Eddie Howe's not coming. The board, I, have, I had trust in the board too. I had trust in the board, Dermot Dersmond. You know, he's he's done tougher deals than this before. Um, and I had trust in him, like faith in him saying he's gonna get this deal done. But instead he sat back, he sat back, and he gave Eddie Howe the time that we didn't have. We didn't have three months. We, 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 if it was three months ago and Eddie Howe said no right there, we were fine, okay, we'll move on. We should ask the question then. Do you want the job? And he should have said I or no. And he never. He should, he should have. He should have said. He should have never said. Um, if he's if Eddie Howe said I'm not winning this, a job in the summer. Well, sorry, pal. We win the manager now for the next season. Sorry, we need them right now to build, rebuild. So that's all you'd have to do as a board. And I'm not even a board person. I'm not specialised in, you know, finance and all that stuff and talking. You know what I mean, but I, you can just tell that we. You know, you can just tell. You know, you just know what to do. You're smart like that. You know, you're anyone where anyone could tell that. I mean, so I mean, it is episode twelve, guys. Yeah. Um, for before we get any guys, please subscribe and like, of course. Uh, just move it in a tiny bit. Right. Um, but let's get into it guys, um, obviously we're going to get into Angie post Um I'm not good at pronouncing, but the recent viewers on the channel guys, thank you for the recent viewers and stuff, and thanks for the replies back about some Australian people come back in the channel, thanks for the, thanks for watching the channel, and they've came back with some good um, comments about the Australian League, which is really thankful, and I've, I've replied and all that stuff, so it's, thank you for that. But we'll move on, um, Angie. Um, or Ange, whatever you got his name, uh, Angie. Ange Postecoglou to Celtic is reportedly under threat after Aussie hasn't met the licence agreements to set out by UEFA. All managers of top flight club in Europe must require the UEFA Pro licence and it has been reported that the student does not have the relevant qualifications. That is from the Times, um, which is very, it, if it's going to happen, um, it is going to be very, it, we've had a big setback again, how's it happened again? I mean, first of all you let it with Eddie Howe three months and this is going to stumble you now. I mean, and Peter's saying this is your back, your back plan, plan B. I mean, come on, come on. According to the reports, Ange, Angie does not, uh, doesn't have the proper UEFA badges to take charge of a club in Europe at present. Celtic must believe there's a way around this or they won't be pers uh, persuading the student to begin with. Uh, the Hoops saw their three month pursuit of Eddie Howe come to a, a calamitous end and they cannot afford another setback. They definitely cannot. A new Celtic manager should be installed uh, by now and the boys are due back for. Um, are due back for um, pre season, um, halfway through June, I think. Um, you know, training stuff like that. Well, um, it's all of a bit of shambles. It is a shambles, a load of shambles. If Angie is the man, the club must be working out the details so the coach can move to Glasgow and take his badges. The club have said nothing about the next manager since Friday and all the hype surrounding Angie's appointment is coming from the press. Sorry about that. Dan, did I just ask me something? Sorry, well. Um, what was I saying, guys? See the excuse you had three months too late about the bathroom staff. They would have asked that in day one or day one week, day, day week, you know, the one week into discussions. No way they would have asked that three months late. No way. And they use that excuse. That's more shit, more. That's embarrassing, that. Um, I mean, if you didn't want the job, you know, maybe we need a manager now. 
just you know what I mean as I say on Friday. Um so we definitely need something now. We definitely need if this Andrew Postacoglu falls through again, it's not it's not just embarrassing. It's the way the clubs have run this club, uh, the the way the owners and the the back the, the board have run this club from not even this season. You know, you're talking around the last season. They put in the hope and putting in the season ticket in the last season saying you're not getting into the stadiums this season unfortunately. But you're gonna to have to pay five pounds during this COVID pandemic back then, still you know, going on now. To watch on your your phone or your TV, not in the stadium. And to watch that rubbish last season there. And this the club only give you back. The club only give you back a fifty pound voucher for the the, the the club the club shop. Not even money back. Not even sitting not even money off your season tickets, not even money off of anything. Just money to buy more of their stuff. I mean, you're talking about down in England the Glazers or you know, Man United destroying Man United and stuff. The cardboard here. A shambles. It's a little shambles from top to bottom, bottom to top. I mean come on. I, I don't believe it. Like if Celtic had this all along, right? I still did add on Andrew Postacoglu. Um, now we're talking UEFA badges, pro license. Surely, if they had this as a plan B all along, three months, they'd have got his licenses by now. And you're talking, he's got to quarantine two weeks because he's obviously from Australia or wherever he is now. I think he's in Australia now or Japan. I don't know one of the two. He's got to quarantine for two weeks. So you're talking mere time. So two weeks from now is the start of the Euros. I mean, I mean, that's if he flies over, um, if he's over now or if he's coming over, you know, you're talking, obviously today guys on recording it is a bank holiday, so you're talking maybe probably be announced tomorrow, 1st of June, if it is him, you're talking to us. Um, but before we get to the end of the, the podcast guys, obviously it's not a very long podcast, but I like to do it. Um, let's look at the qualifying stages for the Champions League this uh, coming into the next season, right? Andrew Postacoglu, if it is him, and I'm talking, this is like, I'm talking a Pedro Cassini manager, I'm, I'm not, no, so, the, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I'm, um, like, I'm, I'm going that direction, but it kind of feels like a, a appointment of that, it kind of does, but best of luck to him if he does come, I hope he does well, obviously I hope any manager comes well, but they did a couple of comments on my, the, the recent video I talked about him, um, a couple of, one, one comment said they did say it about Wim Janssen, it is a good point, you know, when Yamsi came in, he always like try and stop Rangers winning 10 in their own, he did. Um, people weren't very sure of him when he came in, but he did a great job. Um, now, I need to get my glasses on first, because I cannot see, right, okay. Right, so here we go. Um, so, the qualifying stage two, six teams, so Celtic will face Galatasaray, Rapid Vienna and Michelin. They will face one of those three teams in qualifying round two. And then if they get through, they qualify round three. They will face either Sparta Prague, uh, Spartak, PSV, or Genk. I mean, you're talking Sparta Prague again. I mean, we already get hammered bloody four one twice last season. The Europa League can not even get any worse for facing them. We might even face them again. That's when past qualifying round two. You're talking like Galatasaray, Rapid Vienna, Michelin, uh, Eric Spichenko's teammate Michelin there. Um, if you get past that, um, the qualifying round like the end, you know the the post qualifying round before you get into the Champions League, it is, oh my god, you're talking Shakhtar, Donetsk or Benfica, Pff, Jesus, I, 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 there is no chance, I would always like Celtic to win, but there's absolutely no chance we're getting into the Champions League with them teams, I mean you're talking maybe, you're lucky on the one side where, Celtic, if they do get if they, they post qualifying round until before you get into Champions League, you're talking, you're talking. Um, if Monaco, that is in the other same kind of wee group as Celtic, the Monaco, if they get Benfica and we get Shakhtar, it's still not saying we're going to go through, but a less harder side as such, you want to say. But Shakhtar Donetsk did obviously beat um, uh, and Milan drew them as well last season. Oh, well, didn't do well, didn't do very well in Milan last season, of course. But still, um, they still beat them. Uh, so Celtic is going to have a very tough Champions League qualifying round. 
and that is the question how well can Celtic do in Europe next season with this Andrew guy coming in we'll never know until obviously he comes in and, and you know some of his tactics and the things which people are showing is he's a good manager a top coach in, in Australia uh, if I search him up he says he's a, he is the one of the most successful Australian club coaches with two premierships four championships and a con continental title uh, he's age 55 his, his team's coach is Yokama, uh, Marinos head coach since 2017 um, and yeah so he's currently managing Yokama, Marinos so it's, I think it's Japan so the quarantine is still two weeks of course you're talking there but we'll move on to transfer news before we end the podcast off hope you guys enjoyed it please subscribe and like Christopher Wright is set to join Newcastle United of a free for a fee of around six million, which is very, very disappointing. He's been classy. He's, he's shown he wants to play for the shorter season. He's shown the emotion, as I said in recent videos and guys. Um, the twenty-three-year-old has one year left in his contract and is likely to leave the club this summer. Meaning, with one year left, the fee is will be pretty cheap, so that the club doesn't lose out on the Norwegian for free next summer, which is very disappointing. It is what it is, but uh, it's very disappointing if I actually, you know, uh, my fire is leaving. It would be very disappointing, but, you know, um, I'll speak to you guys very shortly, guys, on the channel. Thanks for the recent views and the comments. Do you know what? I don't normally do this in podcasts, but since, since you know, it's a podcast. Um, I'll go through some of the comments in the recent, the recent video, which has got 480 views. Uh, we published in 28th May. Right. Um, the guy I was talking about, it's Fireport, he says they said the same about Wim, Yim, Yim, Wim Janssen, very good. Um, and all that sounds to go said, well done, you man, good video. Hey, well, you know, I love the supporting channel, we're getting more comments, great, see. Um, Mark Conway says, great video, mate, fantastic knowledge. Um, Matthew, great, so for me, uh, I'll call him, just call him Matthew. Um, he came out some a comment saying, the Australian League is harder to win than the Scottish League, it is very even league. Uh, they're not just teams... Not just two teams like Rangers and Celtic fight for the title, which is a, a good league, you know, more teams try to fight for that title, which is very good. Um, uh, Avox comes in with a, a comment saying, A-League, uh, Australian League is the same level as League One. Uh, the J-League is probably better than SPFL or at the same level. As Australian, you're a class manager and will do well for sure if he's given time. Now, the Celtic, I don't think the Celtic board will give time. Like, I, well, I, Celtic board will probably give time, but the Celtic fans, that is the problem. Will Celtic fans give Andre Postacoglu the time he needs over this, you know, I don't think they will. You, they want to see, you want to see wins, they want to win, want to win the title back next season. And this is the way we're going. If this is the way we're going, we're not going to win it for a couple of seasons, the way we're going here. And I'm normally very confident, but this is not the way to go. Um, but best of luck to Andrew if he comes. Um, probably do a video tomorrow or something like that. I might, might record a video or something like that tomorrow. But thanks guys for watching, and I will see you guys for the for another video very soon, guys. Subscribe, and like, nice recent viewers. Share the video out. Peace.